Hello, my name is Tom, Community Manager at Urban Games. Welcome to the second development highlights video. Last time we showed you that in Transport Fever 2 there are little limits on how the world can be designed and shaped. And the same is true for this time's topic, the infrastructure. We wanted a similar level of freedom and flexibility for this part of the game and in today's video I will show you some examples of what we came up with. One of the main tasks for the player is to construct stations. Therefore, we wanted to provide tools for making complex stations with little effort. This is one of the topics where player feedback played a major role in the design. For a quick start, already functional stations can just be placed from a blueprint. After that, the station can be used or it can be expanded with various modules. The combination possibilities on where modules can be placed is nearly limitless. Platforms can be extended individually and each track can of course have its own track type and electrification. A lot of special configurations are possible too, for example asymmetrical stations or the addition of tracks without platforms to enable trains to pass through a station without stopping. The placement of buildings does not only serve a visual purpose, stations can be configured as through or head stations just by choosing the location of the buildings. This can be changed at a later point or both through and head stations can be combined together. On top of that, which was one of the biggest feature requests, stations for passengers and cargo no longer have to be separate. Add a cargo platform to a passenger station or vice versa or combine both of them in one construction. Of course, modules are not only available for train stations but also for bus, tram and truck stations as well as airports and harbors. While trains and tracks traditionally play an important role in train and transport fever games, our goal this time was to pay more attention to road traffic. Private transport plays a more prominent role in Transport Fever 2, thus we were happy to fulfill the long-held request for traffic lights. They are a valuable tool to boost traffic throughput in high-density areas with a lot of car and foot traffic, where the lack of public transport would otherwise congest the streets. And thanks to their ability to detect vehicles, they can also be used for situations with low traffic. Of course, road traffic is not only about cars, this is why traffic lights can be combined with bus lanes. This will give player vehicles priority over cars. In any case, it's up to the player where to place or remove traffic lights. A strong alternative to traffic lights are roundabouts, which of course consist of one-way roads. Build them from a blueprint in individual sizes or construct them in any shape or form desired from scratch. Roundabouts are not the only application for one-way roads, they are available in various speed and lane configurations and any road on the map can be converted into a one-way road. This allows for a fine-grained regulation of traffic flow in and outside of cities. Another use case are highways in or between cities to allow cars and player vehicles to move faster. Ramps and crossings are available as blueprints, which can also be edited after placing them or, thanks to the flexible tools, they can be constructed piece by piece to fit one's liking. These were only a few examples of what effort we made to make each part of the game more accessible but also more flexible. We hope you will enjoy these features as much as we did creating them. Thank you all very much for your attention and the interest in our game. All the best from the whole team at Urban Games and until next time, bye bye. That's right folks, it's me, it's Over the Potato. I'm back with yet another development highlight video for Transport Fever 2. Uh, I thought that I would play the video at the very start of this episode because it does a fantastic job of summarizing absolutely everything that I'm interested in. This is one of the most exciting development highlight videos uh, yet, and there's only been two, so uh, things are going to get very, very exciting indeed. Anyway, uh, jumping right on into what is super, super exciting. Exciting. It's all about the train station, baby. Holy cow! Uh, when 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 they showed when they showed that unbelievably cool modular-looking train station, I thought, oh my goodness, this is as this is as good as it gets. And then when they announced that you can put cargo stations at the, in the same place as passenger stations, I, I almost exploded. I almost exploded. You can probably hear the excitement in my voice uh, right now because I am excited. The amount of possibilities that this brings. Are almost limitless. This is this is such an incredible system that they've introduced. Uh, so the fact that you can now add a, a terminal station, you can make a terminal station, or you can just have a regular pass-through station, whatever you want, really. It's in, it's entirely up to you now with this whole uh, with this whole modular design. You can also increase the length of tracks if you want longer trains to stop at specific stations or not having to stop at specific stations. You can have specific stations that are uh, across between 
uh, across between uh, cargo stations and passenger stations, and you can have some stations that are only passenger stations. The whole modular modular build that they've uh, that they've gone for with this, I think, is is the real the real golden egg behind this golden chicken. Is that a phrase that people use? It is now. I, I, I would like to campaign to get that into a book of commonly used idioms. But somehow, I think that that might be uh, a while off. Anyway, the point is, is that I really, really dig the whole modular system. Uh, I don't know how big you're, you're going to be able to make your station. I, I certainly envision people making exceptionally large train stations. Eight tracks, nine tracks, 16 tracks across. Uh, that will remain to be seen if that's, if that's going to be allowed. Uh, but certainly, very, very cool how all of that stuff is is, is going to be modular and you can just add bits and bobs on wherever you want you can have uh, sections of platform that are undercover you can have open air sections of platform you can even you can even individually make certain tracks electric within the station which I thought was just absolutely fantastic. So you can have like a diesel train that can come down and stop at one particular platform, and you can have electric trains that, uh, that stop at, uh, on, on other specific platforms. Very, very cool indeed. As I've already said, I'm super excited about the uh, the transport, uh, the transport, the passenger and the cargo crossover. I think that's very cool. And also uh, the terminal stations, also very interesting. It will remain to be seen whether if you place more... Uh, terminal building or, or you know, uh, uh, passenger buildings, I guess. It will remain to be seen if that has any impact on the amount of passengers that you can have waiting at any at any station. Uh, so I don't know if perhaps if you've got more platforms, then it allows more people to wait. As I say, that's a, that's a detail that we're going to have to wait a little bit to see. But certainly, holy cow, can I... I, I, I find the, I'm finding it very difficult to describe how unbelievably I, uh, excited I am about this, uh, about this development. The fact that you can have cargo stations in the same place as passenger stations is just mind-blowing to me. Uh, yeah, so that's very, 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 very cool indeed. Uh, the other thing, of course, which was super, super interesting was uh, the road system that they that they introduced in uh, in this episode and the fact that zebra crossings and cars all look like they will play a really important role uh, traffic lights also very very important now it will as i say remain to be seen how the uh, how the cars interact with the world around them already it was really interesting uh, to look at the way that that zebra crossings work in this game so um, I'm going to show you this little bit of foot this little bit of footage here. But as you can see, the zebra crossings don't work like regular zebra crossings, at least from from my perspective, uh, with cars just apparently driving between people, uh, which I thought was a little bit strange. But you know what? Hey ho! If if they, if that's the way that they're going to do it, that's that's the way that they're going to do it. Uh, usually the cars stop to let the people uh, cross the road, but apparently not in this game. So. It's going to be interesting to see how the cars are programmed to run, where they're programmed to go, are they going to go in specific lanes. It's a, it's a bit of a reoccurring problem in City Skylines. The cars aren't programmed individually in that game. They are programmed in a way where they all behave in a very similar fashion, unless you try and force them to go down different routes. Uh, so you'll have, you know, massive tailbacks in one lane, but then you'll have no cars occupying a second lane on a highway, for example. As I say, we're going to have to see how it works out, but uh, but the fact of the matter is you can get traffic lights, and I'm immensely excited about that. You also have passengers and people just walking around on the streets, and you can have them cross over and go to where they want to go. That is hugely interesting. Uh, but yeah, certainly uh, very, very interesting. Very, very interesting there in terms of in terms of just pedestrians and also in terms of cars. Now, the other interesting thing that was shown off was bus lanes. Now, bus lanes are going to be very, very interesting because this is this is going to be the first this is going to be the first game where traffic congestion is actually going to matter. Uh, it didn't previously matter in uh, in Train Fever or Transport Fever, but but congestion will actually matter now that you've got cars on the road and you've got intersections and you're placing traffic lights here there and everywhere whatnot so buses are going to be are going to be very important they're going to be a very very important aspect of how you can keep your how you can keep your city running so the fact that we've got bus lanes I absolutely adore and bus lanes have specific uh, traffic laws that are specific to them they can go through red lights as uh, as is seen here so again Boy, oh boy, that's that's really unique. That's really interesting. I like that a lot. Uh, they've got that in City Skylines as well, and I think it works uh, very, very interestingly. So, yeah, very, very, very cool indeed. Uh, then we went on to have a little look at one-way roads and roundabouts. 
uh, I mean, this has been done before. It's not particularly unique uh, or particularly interesting, but it's unique and interesting in the context of the Transport Fever series, where previously you had no tools to create a one-way road. Now, obviously, we're going to be getting that, uh, that, that one-way road tool, which is going to be... I mean, the fact that you've got access to a one-way road tool makes me question what is the role of the city going to play in relation to the player? I didn't explain that very well. Let me try and rephrase that. As the player in previous Transport Fever and, tra and the Train Fever games, you were solely charged with building up a transport network. You know, sure, you had an, in you had an interest in growing the cities so that you could, you know, they could consume goods, which is obviously what you wanted, transport more goods, more money, and also transport passengers from place to place. The bigger the city, the more passengers you can transport from place to place. Pretty simple. In this game, it looks like you're actually going to be playing an extra role within the city, and you're actually going to have to think about traffic management and how uh, the traffic management of the city impacts how quickly your pedestrians can get to the train station so that they can be transported to another city to make you money. And also, you're going to want to make sure that you have got buses going from place to place in order to uh, get around the massive congestion that you might have in your city centre. For example, so uh, like I've talked about a little bit about in the uh, in the last development, uh, the, the development highlight video, uh, where the city in the background, we just talked about it briefly, where the city in the background looks very, very big and very, very interesting. And it seems to me, at least, that the player relationship with the individual cities across the, across the map might be changing. And honestly, I think that's very, very cool because... Uh, at the moment, you don't really have much ownership for what happens in the cities. If you don't build the roads out in the in, in, in Transport Fever, then, uh, then the AI will just splurge the roads everywhere. However, this looks like it might actually be forcing the players to have a little bit more ownership of what is going on. So I think that that's really, really cool. Now you're incentivized to build roundabouts as well. That's also very cool. I like that a lot. And finally, moving on to the last bit of uh, last bit of information, the last nugget of information, the last golden nugget, the last golden egg that came out the golden chicken. Uh, we've got highways. Highways uh, are gonna change the game uh, because it's gonna be very interesting to see how passengers decide to get from place to place. Again, uh, we still we we're still waiting to see exactly how the individual vehicles, individual. Uh, passengers, pedestrians are going to be programmed, but it's going to be interesting. If you set up a long-range bus service between London and Southampton, for example, or if you have a train service uh, between London and Southampton, are specific types of passengers going to want to get to Southampton via bus if it's cheaper, or are they going to want to take the train because it's faster? Uh, so again, if you have a bus service between London and Southampton, is it is it going to matter? Are people going to fill up both services uh, regardless of what you do, or are they not going to do that? Again, we've we've still got to we still got to wait to see this. As you can see, I am speculating slightly here, but it's still uh, I think an interesting and important question that is going to determine how the uh, how the game turns out. So yeah. I'm really, really excited. All of the stuff that was announced uh, in this uh, development highlight video was super, super interesting. This is sort of the first chunk of the puzzle, if you'd like. The first core chunk of the puzzle. Uh, it's like getting the border done on a jigsaw. You know, you, 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 you assemble the you assemble the, 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 the pieces of the, the border first in the jigsaw and you sort of build it in. I feel that this is like the, the, the first core building block that we, uh, that we have to understanding Transport Fever 2. So yeah, I'm very, very excited about this. Traffic lights, highways, modular stations. I'm over the moon about this stuff. Thank you for watching, folks. Um, if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to click the subscribe button, it would help out a great deal. You want to like the video, then uh, you know, go on and do that. I'm not your boss. Uh, but thank you for watching, folks. I'll see you next time. Bye.